This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. Donald Trump clears the field for the GOP nomination. The math may favor Hillary Clinton in a big way for the Democratic prize, and the state legislature quickly dispatches its budget business, clearing the way for a special session. Joining me to talk politics are two of Talk Business and Politics frequent contributors, Jessica Deloach Sabin and John Burris. Welcome, good to have you with us. Thank you. John Burris, I'm coming to you first. Okay. How did the GOP wind up with Donald Trump? And I'm not going to play any previous clips of you talking about Donald Trump never <laughs> being the GOP nominee. No, that's right. <laughs> we ended up we ended up with him probably uh, for all the same reasons that he very well may end up uh, being president because. Yeah, I sit right here, I wrote columns saying that Donald Trump would never be the nominee. I said that after Iowa, his decline had started, and I was wrong. Um, and I think a lot of Democrats are wrong now to be celebrating the fact that he is the nominee. He is a candidate of you know, personality and um, emotion, and that carries a lot of weight right now with people being so frustrated. I don't support a lot of the policies that he stands for necessarily. At the ones that he stood for in the past, frankly, as a candidate, he says a lot of the right things. Uh, his behavior over you know decades of being involved in politics lead me to believe that I, that he probably wouldn't govern as conservatively as he acts. Nonetheless, that's not what this election about. It's about emotion, and he's captured on it. And I think Hillary Clinton's going to learn that the hard way, just like I did. Jessica, is will this be a spectacular train wreck or a spectacular triumph? Um, it has been a spectacular train wreck from the very beginning. My columns were more appeals to common sense. Please don't let this happen. Please don't let this man get the nomination. Oh my God, I think he is. What is happening right now? reverse psychology. It worked out the way you really wanted so it to. I right? So I <laughs> failed. So basically, what's really unfortunate about it, and, and John touched on this, if Democrats get too comfortable and think that Donald Trump being the nominee is a good thing and that it, it creates a smooth ride for Hillary Clinton to make her way into the White House, I think that's a mistake. And it's just because you never want to get too comfortable. He has constantly defied everything everyone has said is going to happen so you probably don't want to get too comfortable you need to run scared that's how any candidate should run for office so to both of you and he's behind on campaign organization he's behind on fundraising she's got a, many millions of dollars of advantage uh, over him on that and the electoral math is on the Democrat side when you just look at the blueprint of the last presidential election cycle there's a lot of things that have to change uh, demographically for uh, the Republicans to win. John, are you telling me that despite those three big points I just made right there, that he can overcome all those barriers? That's a lot to overcome. Well, I do, I do think he could because all those advantages you listed for Hillary Clinton, and she's still not um, the, the Democratic nominee. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's barely been able to capture the, the delegates that she needs, and she's not there yet. And she's going into a contested convention, most likely. And who would have thought that six months ago, too? So if she wins, and I would have to think that she's the favorite at this point, but if she wins, it will not be because of the strength of her candidacy. She struggles um, against a traditional opponent. Donald Trump is anything but traditional, and I think for that reason, she, she'll probably struggle even great, greater than she did in 2008. Okay, Hillary Clinton is limping across the finish line here. She is still losing states to sure. Bernie Sanders. Sure. Um, why? Well, think about this. There, I think that this goes to show you, it speaks to the diversity of the Democratic Party. Is this movement behind Bernie Sanders telling of what the Democratic Party will end up turning into? You know, John also touched on, well, we've all touched on the fundraising. And I think that even though Donald Trump has said, I'm, I'm doing this independently and I don't need your, your money, I'm fine, I can do this. It's a different story now when you're looking at the Clinton machine, her fundraising ability. You can bet that her fundraising will continue to stay strong if she does secure the nomination, which I do think that she will. It's a whole different ball game. So that question's being thrown around a lot too. If there are people who are right now saying, you know, like President Bush, President George W. Bush saying, we're not going to engage in this, does that hurt him? Maybe, maybe not, but in the long run, you have to have support from your party. She will have support from her party, and it will, be, it will show in fundraising, it will show in her ground game, it will show across the board. Uh, well, I read on Twitter, I, and I retweeted a story from Politico right after Donald Trump won the nomination or, or sealed the nomination. Vicente Fox, the former president of Mexico, apologized for his previous criticisms of Trump regarding building the wall. And I said, it just makes you wonder. I mean, you know, I, I couldn't believe it when I read it, and I just thought, you know, Maybe he's on to something sometimes. You know, you've got this guy who was telling him, cussing him out a month ago, now apologizing and saying they ought to have a talk. 
Uh, it just makes you wonder. Let's pivot, uh, probably really kind of pull the national race into Arkansas this last week. Connor Eldridge, the Senate Democratic nominee uh, facing John Bozeman this year, puts out an online ad, so there's no real money behind it. But it did get a little bit of traction, particularly nationally, certainly talked about in social media and here in Arkansas, tying John Bozeman to Donald Trump because Bozeman has said, I will support the Republican nominee, even if it's Donald Trump. And so there's this string, this litany of Trump offensive comments over the years and this campaign cycle. Is that going to be an effective strategy for Connor Eldridge? You know, I think that it's pretty safe to say that Donald Trump will win Arkansas in November. If you're tying the person you're running against to the person who's going to win the state, I don't see the logic in that. I think the point that Connor's campaign was trying to make was look at the absurdity of Donald Trump and look at how people are going to line up behind him regardless of what he has said. That's not leadership, that's just falling in line. Is that what you want? That's the question that that ad is ultimately posing. John? I think Jessica's right. I mean, it, it, it's just an uphill battle no matter what. I, and I feel, even though some of my predictions have been wrong, I would think that <laughs> Donald Trump would still beat Barack Obama in a head-to-head -head match. And, you know, Bozeman can say, in Arkansas. In, in, Arkansas, in Arkansas, that's right, I'm sorry. So, you, you know, Bozeman can easily say, I'll, I see your, uh, your Trump, I raise you in Obama. Connor Eldridge was an Obama appointed judge. I, I don't think people in Arkansas want more uh, Obama appointed judges representing them in Washington. And so. He's a prosecutor, not a judge. Well, that's right. Yeah. Uh, good point. So um, I, maybe Connor Eldridge also uses mm -hmm. this for fundraising purposes as well. I think that's no a, a definite thing. All right, let's yeah. switch to the state legislature. Asa Hutchinson for all intents and purposes, gets the budget that he kind of laid out there originally. Mm -hmm. Lost his chief of staff, Michael Lamoureux, is leaving at the end of this month. Was it a good week or a bad week for Asa Hutchinson? You know what I'm going to call it? A week in the life of, of a governor, basically. <laughs> Things happen. Ch a chief of staff will leave here and there. It's, it's not uncommon to see that happen. Uh, he's gotten through his first legislative session, his first fiscal session. There have been some bumps along the way, but I'm not going to say it's been a bad week. Yeah. All right, John. No, I think it's been a good week. He resolved the the, the funding issue with DHS. Uh, Michael Lamoureux leaving will certainly be a something to adjust to. A, a lot of people in Little Rock and political circles know that Michael Lamoureux is a good friend of mine. He convinced me to enter politics when I met him in a drive-through uh, Wendy's. <laughs> I was I worked at Wendy's and served. That's as, some persuasion uh, right there. Uh, right. I served his kids. You want to supersize that? No, I want you to run for the legislature. He, he always biggie sized, uh, <laughs> but you know, but uh, that's how we met. And he's a great guy, and he'll have a great future. Uh, the governor will definitely have a, a hole to fill. He'll fill it. He, uh, the governor's the governor for a reason. He's smart. Surrounds himself with good people. He doesn't need advice on, on who to surround himself with. He'll, he'll figure it out just like he did with Lamar. It won't be you. It won't, it won't, it won't be, be me. Most likely not. No, most likely <laughs> not. All right. Uh, we are now kind of gearing up for a highway special session. Uh, governor's going to call that later this month. What do we expect in that, John? Uh, the, the latest seems to be the, the governor's plan that he uh, announced really at his press conference several months ago, or at least a couple months ago. Some reform, um, as Andy, State Representative Andy Davis has said, shaking out the couch cushions and finding, in government terms, a few million here, a few million there, along with some one-time, a plan to allocate one-time and rainy day funding to meet that immediate $50 million need to draw down the federal match. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, I think they're looking at a long-term plan uh, yet to be determined. I think the special will be short, simple, solve the immediate crisis. Jessica? Short, a few days, in and out, probably not much else will make the agenda, if I had to guess. I think that they're going in with the intention of dealing with highway funding yep. and getting out. All right, well, we'll but I, hope they, I hope they find a way to tie into reform in. There needs to be better. There, there can be a discussion about how we're spending our dollars, and I think a lot of members of the legislature want to see that, even if it's not in the special session. Uh, I think it's a discussion that can be had over the they next want few more months. Oversight of what's going on at the Independent Highway Commission, and that's got some constitutional ramifications more there. More government. <laughs> yeah, but spending dollars better. All right. John Burris and Jessica Delos Saban, as always, great to have y'all with Thank us. Thank you. you so much. Thank you.